Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, and I'm back to bring you another episode review from Season 7 of The Loud House. So let's get right into it. Today's episode is Leave No Van Behind. In this episode, Lana, Lynn Sr., and Leonard team up to fix Vanzilla after it breaks down inside a car wash, and they have to figure out how to make it work again, or else they'll be forced to buy a new van. The best way I can describe this episode would be that it took the whole broken family car idea from Fantastic Voyage, gave it a few tweaks on how the Louds go about fixing their problem, and actually told a more interesting story. No one turned into a control freak when getting a new van, no one was trying to manipulate the dad into getting rid of, and then getting back a van that realistically should have been scrapped years ago, something Lola directly points out in this episode, and at least the characters were able to justify their desire to keep Vanzilla by sharing some fond memories in the form of flashbacks and family pictures. Speaking of family, this episode focuses on Lana, her dad, and her grandfather, a rather unique multi-generational character pair the show hadn't done before. Seeing all three of them bonding over their love for Vanzilla, both emotionally and physically, and trying to fix something that's been in their family for decades was both very sweet and very entertaining. They attempt to diagnose the exact problem by trying to roll start the engine when they push it down a hill and use a lightning rod to check the electrical system. They tear the whole van apart and discover the problem is a rusted cylinder gasket. However, since their van is outdated and no one makes parts that will fit inside their vehicle anymore, the Louds pay a visit to Vanzilla's original inventor in the hopes that he has the part they're looking for. This is where we get some backstory on how Vanzilla was created. Some guy named Freddy Fungo was raised in a large family and they all couldn't fit inside a regular car. He later designed a van with enough room for the whole family and started mass producing them. Unfortunately, no one, not even his own family, wanted to buy his vans and he was forced to close his factory. He ended up resenting his own creation and never again wanted to hear anyone talk about it out of fear of being laughed at. That's why he didn't want to talk to the louds and was ready to toss them out of his old factory once they managed to get inside. On the one hand, I can sympathize with his behavior because he lost his business before it ever really got started, and pretty much wasted his time and money for nothing. But on the other hand, why would he choose to live in his own abandoned factory surrounded by his old vans if he hated being reminded of his own failure? Shouldn't he have just scrapped the unsold van so he would never have to look at the things that caused him a lot of pain? Maybe there's a deeper reason for all of this? But either way, Freddy turns over a new leaf after the louds explain how much they love his van. They work together to create a brand new cylinder gasket from scratch, and they use it to get Vanzilla running again. It was a big win for Lana and a big loss for Lucy and Boris who were planning to conduct a funeral for Vanzilla. Oh yeah, and Freddy joins the Louds in a group picture as his reminder of the one family that actually cared about his creation. A little creepy of an old guy to keep a photo of someone else's family in his wallet, but hey, the guy deserves a win after all this time, so I say let him enjoy it. Overall, this was a great episode and I can't really complain about it. It was great seeing Lana, Lynn Sr., and Leonard doing a little family bonding, and they were just the right characters for this kind of story, especially Lana Lana since she's the family auto mechanic. I thought the history behind the making of Vanzilla and the man who designed it was pretty good, despite my critique about Freddy choosing to continue surrounding himself with the vehicles that effectively ruined his life. Still, he does redeem himself when he finds out the Louds actually care about his creation, making him believe he's not really a failure after all, so that was good. The antics involving the Louds repairing the van and trying to get through the gate at the factory were humorous, and the little sentimental moments with the family reflecting upon the good times they had with Vanzilla were nicely done. There was also this one random moment moment with Lana casually ditching her pants because apparently Flip doesn't care if you're wearing them inside his store or not. I'm like, okay, that's weird. But then I'm like, all right, this is Flip we're talking about. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this episode succeeded where Fantastic Voyage failed in terms of storytelling and character presentation. And who knows? Maybe this will be the last time Vanzilla goes through a mechanical breakdown just for the sake of having an episode. We'll just have to see where the road takes it. Just hopefully not on any U-shaped hills. With that said, I give Leave No Van Behind an 8.6. 7 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Leave No Van Behind. So I gotta ask, what did you guys think of this episode? Sound off in the comments below, and be sure to click that subscribe button for more Loud House-related content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.